Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up for a York RTU. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a follow-up for a York RTU. We have two separate circuits for this unit. In my last service call, only one of the two condenser fan motors were running for this circuit. This is one circuit and this is a separate circuit here. So we have two circuits here. We got the unit up and running. You can see over here and it's sweating. So we're, we're removing a lot of heat right now. This unit is running in one circuit. I checked pressures on the first circuit. It also seemed a little low, slightly low, but we are cooling and we got the unit running. Right now, we're having an issue right now where we basically have zero pounds of pressure in the second circuit. So right now we got a serious problem. I got my digital connected here, suction 2.9 pounds, liquid zero pounds with about 85, 86 degrees up here on this roof in sunny New York City today. This is an awesome view right here. Right there, man, that's an amazing building right there. Anyways, we got the nitro here. This is just what I might have on my truck. Hopefully it's enough to see what's going on, but there's definitely a big refrigerant leak in circuit two. And if you look here, I don't know if you guys can read, but it says the sensors on the fifth floor on the west side and 2015 they and in uh what is it august 31st 2015 they added two pounds of refrigerant c2 circuit two which is going to be for this one with x it's not even pulled in and that's got to be because it must be shut down on one of these pressure controls here first things first let's turn this unit off in the previous service call, I found a broken wire on one of the condenser fan motors and I replaced all of our capacitors. They all had low readings. All right, I know this is number one. I think it's actually labeled. No, but this one is, and there's an X on it. So I guess that's for this contactor. All right, let's see what we got here. These connections look good. take a picture of where they go that's that now let's take off each terminal and meg this let's see if this thing is even good i'm assuming the low pressure control saved this thing Oof, super tight let's take these off let's use a basic meter for now we'll probably be okay but let's isolate this compressor at the moment I'm gonna do a basic test right now. Meg megameter will be nice. I do have one in the truck, but it's what I got right now. Continuity and resistance. Let's make sure we got continuity across each one. And we do, and let's make sure nothing is grounded. Nope. probably be all right if it was grounded you know this unit would have run it would have blew the brake already but you never know what these people did over here all right put the screws back get the covers open nitro tank is open let's go ahead and pressurize okay from the high side let's bring the pressure up you see liquid is going up and suction pressure's coming up Close it. It has a leak check solution here. First thing I'm gonna do are these pins. It's the most common area. First things first, let's hit these pins, man. Got a new bottle in here. The other one, the cap broke, so I gotta do a little something, maybe this way. Well, it feels like I can't even do anything here. Let's see. And tell me this thing's broken too. Maybe that's just a stopping cap? Let me see. This thing might explode on us now. All 
All right, let's see. Nope. This thing actually might be slightly leaking right there. Oh man, these bottles, man. That thing fell. Now let's check a little something right now over here. Okay, at the moment I got about 156 pounds of pressure in here. It's 1.14 p.m. The caps are not leaking, I put those back. Let's see what we see in here, man. I don't really see anything in this compartment. This coral I know is in bad shape. Let's lift this up. Sure. Yeah, open that up. Let's put that that way. I know these coils are real bad. Oh boy. Let's see if we can see anything or get in anywhere. All right. All right, guys, right now we got the top off. If I put my ear here, it sounds like it's leaking, man. This thing is leaking. It's the coil. And I'm not really surprised because it's in such bad shape. Guys, look how bad this coil is. No wonder it's leaking. Oh, my Lord. I just wish I could see from where exactly it's leaking. But, my Lord, this thing is, this thing is done. We changed the filters, the belt, capacitor, a bunch of other things last time. Oh boy. It's gotta be this coil. I feel like I hear something down that wall, but I can't take off that cover without removing ducts and all that stuff. So I'm gonna put some refrigerant in. EPA does allow you for a tracer. So I need that as a tracer so I can check with an electronic leak detector. You know what? The pressure's a bit high. What I'm going to do is lower the pressure, dump some nitro out because there's no refrigerant, and then I'm going to add some refrigerant and then some nitro on top of it because I don't want anything being sucked the other way. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to dump some of this. Oh, how much is here left? All right, this. All right, low side's coming down now. Uh, we got 50 pounds of pressure in there. You are allowed to add a tracer. All right. Let's do that. Should be at least 100 pounds in there. Now I'm going to raise that up. So now we got some refrigerant. Could watch the low side coming up. Just a little bit as a tracer. All right, we got the nitro connected now. All right, we're gonna raise some of that pressure. Let's raise that up and you'll know for sure. All right, we're coming back up. Two hundred pounds of pressure. I got my Infocon TechMate electronic leak detect. Oh, it's already going off. Look at that high. Oh man, it's gotta be this coil. I hear something in this area. Yeah, it's definitely sensing something in this area. And I hear a little something too. wonder if we can find something and pinpoint it but something's definitely going on in this area and yeah I hear it though I can hear it I just wanted to physically see it because you ain't taking off this cover without disconnecting this duct or that that's just unfortunate this whole thing would have to come off you'd have to disassemble even this out here this whole thing but it's constantly going off in this area. Oh man. I closed all this up. Let the refrigerant kind of sit in there for a little bit. Yeah, 
Yeah, this meter is going off. It's going off when we go in here. There's a leak somewhere in there. Oh man. All right, we have a steady green light for power, and then you see high is just blinking. Let's try this one more time because we just took lunch and came back. Let's see if any refrigerant got trapped in here. See how it like reacts? Yeah, it's such bad shape, man. Just looking at it, you know this thing is leaking. It's all rusted up here, and in the back is just torn apart. The fins. If you try to brush the coil, they'll just fall right off. Slide this over real quick. You see how it's leaking right there? And I can hear that thing, man. I can hear it. It's slightly hissing away. This coil's done, man. Honestly, just looking at that coil, I can tell you that thing is leaking. That's just an unfortunate thing, but pretty much anywhere where there's a connection, raised connection, you want to double check that. Each end, all the U-bands for the condenser and evaporator coils and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just an unfortunate thing. We also have a channel here for this condenser coil. I'm gonna run the electronic through there and we'll see what's up. Pins, right? Your shredder valve is a very common leak point. And the pipe where it enters the coils here, where it goes from copper to aluminum, known to leak as well. Strangely enough, those are not leaking. That's a good thing. I'd rather change this condenser coil than have to change this evaporator coil. And unfortunately that's gonna be for two circuits. And they're gonna be really shut down. It's already 80 degrees now, man. It's hot and you want the AC. I think right now the best thing we can do is just really perfect that one circuit, let them let that thing run. And uh gonna be all she wrote let them run on one circuit for now and make sure everything's good luckily the compressor's still good and that low pressure control did its thing but we're gonna have to come back here and replace that evaporator coil with two filter dryers you might think to yourself might be time for a new unit and it is possibly true but i don't think they're gonna want to spend to uh, close this block down and get a crane here remove this one dispose of it and get a new one in and install test it and all that you know this is uh air conditioning system and a heating system their heat is uh actually natural gas and over here is the gas line man to be disconnecting all this stuff good luck my friend they're not gonna want to pay that i already know these people and we're gonna wrap it up from here i guess that's all we could really do if anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come up with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.